This is an introduction to the basics of annelid morphology using two species as examples. The first on the left is often found associated with a sea star in California. The second is undoubtedly familiar to you as the night crawler. First, in Southern California, bat stars, Pateria miniata, usually bear one or many individuals of the annelid Oxydromus pugitensis on their oral surface. These worms are easy to collect. They're small, so they fit easily on a microscope slide. And some individuals are relatively translucent, so you can see into their bodies. All those are great reasons to use them as a model for annelid morphology. You can see that they look complicated on the outside. There are lots of things sticking out. But since they have this body plan that mostly consists of repeated similar units, it's not that hard to figure them out.
This side view gives you a pretty good look at the parapodia, but for a really good view, you need to take a cross section of the body. I preserved an individual and just sectioned it with a razor blade. You can see a parapodium on each side, left and right. On each parapodium are two tentacles, a long dorsal serous and a shorter ventral serous. You can see two groups of chidae here, a large group ventrally and a small group of just a few chidae dorsally. Those correspond to neurochidae and notochidae, respectively. You can also see a single aciculum, an internal supportive chida, in each of the two parts of the parapodium, the neuropodium and the notopodium. The neurochidae are what we call compound. They have two parts separated by a joint where they can flex. You can see a lot of other things in this section as well. The prostomium is not a segment, it's considered pre-segmental. You can see its five appendages here pretty clearly.
Like most annelids, Oxydromus can repair damage to its posterior end. The pygidium, which bears the anus and the anal cirri, is also not a segment. It's considered post-segmental. Oxydromus captures food using a muscular aversible proboscis. Here it is in several views. Here's that section again. All the space between the body wall and the intestine in this section is salomic cavity. One way annelids use this body cavity is as a storage depot for gametes, like the eggs that this female is carrying.
While Oxydromus is a great model for external anatomy, it's hard to see some internal details and they're too small to dissect easily. So on to our second annelid, the nightcrawler Lumbricus terrestris. You can see how segments act as isolated hydrostatic units as these move, especially if you focus on the anterior end. The clitellum is a really obvious feature of reproductively mature individuals. Members of this clade have very few chidae. Lumbricus has only eight per segment, four on each side. Here we're seeing the two ventral chidae on each side. On segment 15, there's a pair of male gonopores. This is where this earthworm would release its own sperm during mating. These are hermaphrodites, so they also have a pair of female gonopores where they accept sperm from their mate. Those are on segment 14, but they are much smaller and hard to see. The mouth is ventral to the prostomium and surrounded by the very first segment, which is called the peristomium.
These are not very translucent, so to see inside, one has to dissect them. The pharynx is surrounded by muscle fibers that help to dilate it for feeding. This pair of pouches on the esophagus are called esophageal pouches. The two pairs posterior to it that are white are called calciferous glands. This is the crop. 
this is the gizzard. And from here on back, the digestive tube is basically intestine. You can see the internal ends of chidae glistening in their muscular ketal sacs. The nervous system in these animals is beautiful, but to see its anterior end clearly, you have to remove the pharynx. You've seen lots of dorsal blood vessel, but in this region of the body dorsally, there are also five pairs of muscular lateral vessels, the hearts. I've damaged some of them, and when the blood leaks out, you can't see them very well.